Welcome to part two of performance to plan. In part one, we built a burn up chart, and this time we're going to build a burn down chart using much of the same concepts. This time what we're going to do is we're gonna calculate the total number of tests, and then we're basically gonna subtract the running total. So let's create another tab. I've created the tabs, the, the uh, calculated fields already for you. Total count using a new function called total, and we're gonna to be total of the count of the test. And the reason we use total is because we want all the records to be included. And then here's the formula for the burn down value. We're taking the total number of tests, and then we're subtracting the running count, the running sum of those tests. That's the same formula we used in part one. So you bring the planned date over, change this to discrete or exact date, take the burn down total, add that, that gives us the burn down chart we were expecting. Now, if you look here, we have 31 tests. The first one is expected to be completed on January 1st, so it's only plotting 30. Just like here, the last test is going to be on June 29th, so on June 29th we'll have zero tests outstanding. Let's bring the completed date. We'll change this also to the exact date. Now, the completed date's not looking quite like we were expecting. Now, what's happening is all the the fields or all the rows that have nulls or blanks or don't have a completion date are showing up as have having happened on this date here. So the way we get around that is we add the completion status to the completed date. And once again, it's taking the total value for all 31 tests and then subtracting out the completed projects. The ones that are still open are showing up as null and aren't showing up on this chart. And then of course we just do the dual axis, synchronize, and then we can change the colors. Get rid of that, change the color to orange, and there we go. I do want to show you a little nuance Let's just duplicate the sheet we had. So the first time we looked at the total count using the total function. Now we're going to look at the total using the window sum. The difference is that the window sums, window sum adjusts based on any uh, other criteria or partition you put under the details tab. I'll show you what that looks like. And then this is the burn down value we're going to use. Running some still, but just the total. What value are we using for the total? So we'll get rid of the burn down using the total function. Let me show you just one thing here before we do that. Okay, so this is what we had last time using total. At this point, we said we'll put on the completion status, it'll break the completed and the open ones apart. This time when we do it though, nothing changed. Why? Because when we broke it apart, the, run, the Windows sum is based on the open, there's a field for the open Windows sum, and then there's also a window sum for the completed projects. If you remember, we only have uh, seven completed projects, and so it's saying that the total is seven, and then it burns it down. So that's the little difference between using total and Windows sum.